Okay, so when I'm looking at this equation, three of these variables are going to turn into numbers. The y1, the m, and the x sub 1. The other y and the other x stay as y and x. So when I look at problem number one, again, these problems are on page 355 in our book. It says, write an equation in point slope form for the line with the given slope that contains the given point. Okay, that basically is a long drawn out way of saying, take these numbers and plug them into this equation. Okay, so number one says our slope equals 1 over 5 and then it gives us a point of 2 comma negative 6. We're going to take these pieces and we're going to plug them into these variables. Okay, so let's rewrite this first as y minus, what's this y here? Negative 6. In the formula there's a negative and in this pair there's a negative so that turns it into a positive, positive 6. Oh, okay. Equals, what's our slope? One, six. 1 over 5. 1 over 5 times x. In the equation there's a negative and in our ordered pair it's a positive so it's it becomes negative 2 and that's it that's all you have to do with those so let's do a couple more together okay. number 2 slope equals negative 4 and the ordered pair is 1 comma 5 we know that the y is going to be here equals sign x and we want to plug in everything else. We start with our ordered pair. This is a minus in the equation. We have a 5, so this stays a minus, and it goes there. The x also, we keep the minus from the equation, and we put in the 1. And what's our slope? Negative 4. That's it. Are we good? Or do we need one more? Yeah. One more just to be more. sure. Make it five. One more just to be sure. One more to be sure. Okay, yes. number three. Oh. Number three. Slope is zero. The ordered pair is three comma negative seven. Y minus negative seven is going to become a positive seven equals a slope of 0 times x minus 3. Now, our next step is we're going to be taking equations like this and we're going to be working with them, not just plugging numbers in. So number 4 has different directions. In the book it says graph the line described by each equation. Okay, I'm going to do a couple of examples up here. We could pass these around. There's one on my desk right by you. The stamp. Let's do two of them. So as I start working, let's pass these around. Leaving. Faith. Number four says y minus 1 equals negative parentheses x minus 3. Bless you. I want you to look at what's in the place of the slope here. What's there? It's an invisible negative 1. And that's important because in order to graph this, there's two things we could do. One, I could take the fact that this is an ordered pair and I can find that point. So this is my x and it's still negative here which means in the ordered pair it's the opposite. And what's my y? 1. And what's my slope? Negative 1. Negative 1 over 1. 
So I could find this point and go one, two, three, one. And then I could find another point by using the slope and going rise over run. If I go down one and over one, there's my slope. Two points makes the line. The other way to do this is to use the equation. Oops. Did I see a question? Yeah. When you turned the numbers into an ordered pair, why did you Because in the point slope form, there's a negative. So if they're in the equation with a negative still in front of them, that meant in the ordered pair they're positives. But see, that's why I don't like doing it this way, because if I'm going fast, I tend to mess that up, right? So here's another way that I tend to like using better. For those of you who are like, that was confusing, I don't trust myself mess not messing up the negatives here, the other way is to turn it into y equals mx plus b. Okay, so we're going to solve this equation to simplify it so that the y is by itself on the left and the right side is representing mx plus b. First thing we want to do with this then is distribute. On the next line down, we're going to keep the y minus 1 is equal to now negative x plus 3. Plus three. On the left side of the equation, I have a negative 1 and I want the y by itself, so what am I going to do? Right. Add the 1. y then equals negative x plus 4. Oh, that, and that slope intercept. That slope intercept form. So now I could go and I could graph it by putting my point here and using my slope to find another point. Really? Two ways to do it. This is the way people tend to think you should just by pulling things out of this equation. I like to do this. It's what I'm used to and then I'm not worried about messing up the negatives. Okay, let's do another one together. I have a question. Okay. Uh, so when you subtract, right, from the left side, yep. you only subtract from one number on the right side. I'm combining like terms when I do that. When I'm adding or subtracting from both sides, I'm going to combine like terms. Where I do it to everything is when I'm dividing or multiplying. Okay, yeah, that was my question. Did that clarify? Yeah. Can you find the second point after 4? I knew to go that way because it's a negative slope, and I went down 1 and over 1, down 1 and over 1. I know that this line has to be a nice negative. Okay. Let's try number five together. We do, but you know what? I think number five looks sort of simple. Let's do number six. It has a fraction in it. Number six says y plus one is equal to negative one-half times x plus 4. Okay. First way to do this, and I know that a lot of you probably won't do it this way, but I want to show it again, is to pull out of the equation the ordered pair and the slope. This is my x, and it's right now a positive. The equation has a negative, so that means that in the ordered pair, this must be a double negative, right? So my x pair is going to be negative 4, comma, negative 1. And what's my slope? Okay, so I can graph that. Negative 4, negative 1. It's going to be a negative slope, so I know it's going to end up going this direction. I'm going to rise up 1 and run over 2. And I went to the left instead of to the right because I know I want a negative line. I also could have dropped down 1 and run across 2. 
and that gives me my line. Again, I know myself, I mess up with negatives often and knowing I have to pull these out of here and remember that if they're positive, that means they're really negative. That's confusing to me and I teach this stuff. So, other way. Where'd you get the negative one? Open the Y plus one door. Yeah, see, that's where the mistakes can happen. So instead, let's simplify this. And I'm gonna wish I had written these somewhere else because they're gonna get in the way. All right, what is negative one half times X? Negative y plus one equals negative one half x, and then negative one half times positive four is going to be negative two. What's on the left side that I want to get rid of? So I subtract one from both sides, and I get y is equal to negative one half x minus three. Where is this crossing? Negative three. And again, this is why I like using the equation better. I missed that negative three when I drew my line. I'm off just a little smidge. This is where the point really is. Right? <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna try to move a little bit faster for problems like number seven. Number seven says, write the equation that describes each line in slope-intercept form. So they're giving us the pieces for point-slope form, but they want us to put it in, yeah, slope-intercept form, which is what we just did, right? We just took that equation and we converted it. Um, I want you to look at the problem for number seven says negative one third is slope and then negative three comma eight is on the line. I'm going to show you what the book wants you to do and then I'm going to show you how I do it because I think my way is easier. The book wants you to say y minus eight equals negative one third times x plus 3. Again, not my favorite equation because of all of the possibilities of messing up the positives and the negatives. Do you guys see where that can happen? Yes. Yes. Okay. And then they want us to say, okay, y minus 8 equals negative 1 third x. What is negative 1 third times 3? <laughs> negative 1. I'm going to add the 9 to both sides, and I'm getting y is equal to negative 1 third x plus 8. Oh, you're right. I don't know. I messed up. It's 7. Thanks for catching that. I was doing 1 and 8 in my head, I think, is how I came up with the 9. Okay. That's great. We got to the answer. Not my way I would do it. This is my favorite of those equations. Y equals MX plus B. I know it's my favorite because I work with it in seventh grade math and algebra, so I use it a ton. Yeah. You guys are pretty familiar with it too. I can take these and put them in here. What am I missing? I don't know my plus B from this information. You have to find it because that's your intercept. But we can find the intercept by plugging these in. So my Y is 8 yes. equals negative 1 third times negative 3 plus B. And I'm going to solve for B. Well, first I want to do this negative one third times negative three, which is one. Eight equals one plus B. Subtract one. Seven equals B. And now I have all the pieces to say Y equals negative one third X plus seven. Same answer. And one of you may not, don't have to deal with the negatives in that crazy equation.
Cáp And I think that's going to be all we do. Um, let's try this. Actually, no, we're going to stop there. I want you guys practicing on this. It starts on page 355. You're going to do numbers 17 through 19. I'm not going to stop there. 17 through 30. Yay. 